What's going on guys? So one, to start, thank you for watching. Two, um, without you guys, I would not have hit a thousand subs. So thank you for one, or I guess for two, for three. I don't know, either way, thank you <laughs> for your guys' support. Um, I love doing this kind of work. I'm mainly videoing it to help you guys out and just because I don't know. It's fun. I love doing it. I love sharing my hobby. So, but aside from that, today we are starting assembly on Austin's built motor. So we got the motor back right there. I don't know if you can see it here. We got the block back, we got the crank back. All the stuff is on the table and the bench. And I think I have some stuff in my basement too, but we got the block back. Um, just like last video, I'll probably do a series on this one as well. This is a little bit different than the video that I did before with the motor. Um, this is gonna have a few different components in it than that one. And then there's also a couple of small things that I missed in the previous series that I kinda wanna touch on with this as well. So yeah, we'll cover pretty much everything in this, hopefully everything in this series and then uh, if there's any other questions, I guess, just put it in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. That's one thing I'm trying to get better at is answering comments because I suck at answering comments and looking back at my videos, I just post them on YouTube and while they're uploading, uh, I just go out and work in the garage and try to film more. So I try to just keep feeding them, feeding them, feeding them. Um, I know this is getting a little off topic, but I've been having issues with the the program that I use to build my videos. So that's why it's been such gapped, or I guess that's why videos come out in spurts. Um, it's also a time thing. Like these videos take a couple hours to make and then to upload as well. So I'm trying to do my best here. So hang with me, I'm trying. All right, back to the fun stuff, the engine stuff. So the block, we got the block back. Um, this block, we had the mains aligned honed, new cam bearings, I believe new expansion plugs in the oil galleys. I asked them if they would thread it, but they, I guess they forgot. So these are just going to have to do. Um, these cylinders, the uh, decks were surfaced and then the uh, cylinders were actually torque plate honed. So the main difference between this block and the block in the previous engine series is that this one was a line honed because we're doing a different crank setup. Uh, it's going to have a lot more horsepower rating, I guess. I don't think he's going to run it at the max horsepower or potential that this motor can handle. He's actually going to do, I think, around six or 700, so about what the other motor was rated for. But it's good to have that extra assurance that he can put more power into it. So yeah, a little bit more work on this block than the previous one. Obviously it's gonna cost a little bit more with that. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the quote here actually, or the uh, invoice actually for it. That way you can get a good representation of what it might cost if you have a machine shop do the work to yours. All right, folks, this is the sheet. So diamond and machine, my bad, diamond engine in machine, which I think they're also diamond engine and RV, I think is also what they go by, but located in Monticello, Indiana, which is relatively close to where I'm at, um, about an hour and a half south. So basically what they did with the block or the motor itself, they hot tanked it. Uh, they did new cam bearings, which actually they bought new cam bearings and used their own because the supplied ones actually came back with me. Uh, they decked the block, aligned home the mains, uh, they torque plate, honed the cylinders. See, they finish washed the block, which would kind of be as expected. Uh, they did balance the rotating assembly. So with that, they also had to purchase Mallory to make sure that the, uh, the rotating assembly was balanced. I think that's an actual like additive part. Well, I guess not part, but material that they add to the crank to uh, help it balance out. Uh, they inspected the heads, pressure tested the heads, 
And I believe that's pretty much it other than shop material and uh, whatever other labor. So with all of this stuff added up, you're looking at almost $2,000 in machine work. So that $2,000 does not include the pistons, the rods, the bearings, the crank, any of the hard parts. That is mainly just the machine work and labor. Um, they did add, I think the only material in there is really the cam bearings and the mallory. So other than that, it's pretty much all labor. Now, you would think that's a lot, and it kind of is a lot, but this motor should last hundreds of thousands of miles with a higher horsepower rating. You can beat the crap out of it and it should be good to go, which is what we're looking for. So other than that, we're gonna dig into the parts and this is where it gets even more expensive. On second thought, before we get into the parts, I'll mention two hangups that we had with this uh, machine shop. Well, it's not machine shop, but just some confusion. So basically, when we sent all this stuff in, it was all of this stuff and then all my buddy Brandon's stuff. So they had done two motors at once. And when we sent Austin's stuff in, the stuff, or the harmonic balancer that he supplied with all of his internals and whatnot was this one. This is an internally balanced flywheel, not flywheel, harmonic balancer. So basically this can be used on an internally balanced crank. Problem is, Kelly's Compstar cranks are externally balanced. So they had everything set up to balance this Compstar crank and they didn't have the correct balancer. So what they ended up using was Brandon's LB7 slash LLY fluid damper, which is this one. So this is not exactly his, but this is the same one, same part number. So now if you were to look up this part number, it would show up as an LB7 or LLY damper. That's all right for this LBZ because it is balanced with the rotating assembly. You cannot buy an LB7 LLY damper and slap it on an LBZ or LMM. It will not work. Um, it will throw the balance of the rotating assembly off. So that is slightly different than technically what it should be, but it's going to work regardless because it's balanced to the rotating assembly. The other hang up that we had is when we got all the parts back. Um, it looks like the people or the shop that Austin went to to get all his parts sent out the wrong main studs. So I believe these are LB7 LLY main studs that he was accidentally given for his LBZ. So this stud here is one that I pulled back out of the motor or the block after they had done the align honing. These studs are the ones that I just got in today. These are LBZ studs and these are fresh off the website. So we're gonna go ahead pull those caps off and you can see there is a notable difference in height. So you can see down there, they're pretty much squared up. And then up here, there's a good quarter inch or so, maybe even eighth inch of, I guess, threads missing on the shorter one. So this one, the longer one, is the one that we were missing for the LBZ. All right, so aside from the bearings, another upgrade that we're doing is an L5P oil cooler. So this is the 17 to 19 uh, oil cooler. It'll still accept the 22, uh, 32 oil filter, I believe is the part number. Uh, it's the same oil filter that is used on the older models. Um, the pistons are an LB7 slash LOI style piston. You can tell because it does not have the brass inserts where the wrist pin goes through, but these are delipped. So basically what they do is you can kind of see the machining, maybe not super easy. Okay, maybe not at all, but they take the lip off of here so that the spray of the injector does not end right at the lip. That causes cracking in a lot of Duramax engines. Uh, another thing they did is they coated them. So 
One thing that I messed up on my last video, or last engine series, is that there is not one, but two markings on these pistons. You can see that little arrow down there. I believe that points towards the front of the engine. So this one points towards the valley, and this one points towards the front. So there should be four, a group of four pistons that are identical, and then another group of four pistons that are identical. And you want to make sure that those are all in the correct orientation. That is one thing that I forgot to mention in the last engine series. It's not crucial. The engine will still run. But as far as the research that I did, it'll be a little bit noisier. Just because there might be a little bit of piston slap on the cylinders. So keep that in mind. Alright, so aside from the pistons, we got a dirty hooker diesel pinned oil pump. Um, love these pumps. As far as Dirty Hooker versus Waggler, I don't really know the difference, but I think just the difference is the, the way they, they pin and they key these. Dirty Hooker actually keys these. They run a key way through it. All right, oil pump. Now, alternate firing camshaft. There is a big debate on whether alternate firing camshafts actually work or not in regards to breaking crankshafts. Some guys will swear by alternate firing camshafts. They'll say that you slap one in there, you're never gonna break a crank. In some instances, I know there has been broken cranks with alternate firing cams. Um, like I said, I don't know which way to swing with that one, but this is what he supplied me with, so that's what we're running. I do not remember what brand this is, but I know that it has a keyway cut into it already, as you can see. I want to say it's a waggler because I think SoCal actually has a stamp in the back of it. So this one may actually be a waggler. And then we have the Cali's Comstar crankshaft. So this crank was taken out of the package at the machine shop and they balanced it. As you can see, it would not be saran wrapped had it been bought brand new. Um, this is freshly saran wrapped from the machine shop. I haven't pulled it out yet, but once I do pull it out, I'm gonna inspect it and show you guys kind of where they drilled their holes for balancing. So, when they balance all this stuff, um, you have to pretty much bring them everything. They need, well, if they're a really good machine shop, they might weigh everything separately and make sure that it's spot on perfect. But that's not necessary. The machine shop really only needs one piston, one wrist pin, uh, both wrist pin clips, the rod, the rod bearing, the rod bolts, and whatever else slides onto the crankshaft, which would be the harmonic balancer and the flex plate, all the hardware, all that stuff. You'd wanna bring all that. That way they can get the crankshaft pretty much true and balanced for assembly. And then as I stated before, here is the fluid damper harmonic balancer that we're gonna be using. The other one is over here, which I'm sure you guys saw in a previous clip. This is the internally balanced one. This one will not work. So we're going with the LB7 LLY because that's what was available at the time that they balanced. This is the one that we're gonna be using. Part number 830111. So, Obviously, none of this stuff has been cleaned yet. You can kind of see the smears of oil from the uh, piston squirters and the check valves and plugs and all that. So we're going to go ahead and get these cleaned up and start assembling them onto the block. After that's done, I'm going to go ahead and throw the block on the engine stand and start putting all the rest of the stuff in. Um, now, I actually had a question for anybody out there who maybe more knowledgeable than I am. They make high flow piston squirters. But what I wanna know is can I make high flow piston squirters? So this little hole right here, I wanna know if this can be drilled out or not to make a higher flowing squirter. If you know, let me know, because I'd be interested in possibly making these a higher flowing squirter rather than buying some. Why, you may ask? 
I don't know, just to say I can. And then last but not least, we have the ATS diesel uh, one-piece billet flex plate. So this is gonna act as your flex plate and flywheel. As you can see, we have some ARP hardware. Along with this, um, I also have some 3 8 push rods that are getting put in there uh, from Merchant. They're 3 8 Promali, and then a set of Beehive springs that are going in the heads. Oh, and I also forgot, we have a set of Cali's Compstar rods. So, most of the stuff's new. I think there's a couple used things in here, but for the majority, or for the most part, the rotating assembly is brand new. Um, yeah, so, Compstar rods, Compstar crank, LB7, LOI, D-lip pistons, uh, ATS, flex plate, fluid damper, balancer, dirty hooker diesel, oil pump, L5P oil cooler, Waggler alternate firing cam, and then a mixture of dirty hooker diesel and ARP hardware throughout. So, should be a pretty stout build. So before we start the assembly, I'm gonna real quick go over the total price. So you may not care, um, it may just be a number, whatever. I know some people are in different financial spots than others. But all in all, with the machine work, the labor and the parts, this engine will cost around 25 grand built and installed and tuned. So that includes the fuel, the 12 millimeter pump and the 100 over injectors. That includes the engine, all the hard parts. Um, a lot of what he caught a break with was like the good used parts. If you can find good used parts that can still be used in motors and stuff like that, that'll cut you a big break. Another thing that I found is if you find parts that somebody has bought and just doesn't use, like new parts that have that pretty much can't be returned. Um, that's kind of the case with my motor that I'm gonna be building. I found a crank and a bunch of other stuff that a guy had bought and then he just lost interest in the project and so he sold it for a pretty good price. Um, those will save you big time, that's for sure, because all that stuff adds up. But yeah, you can expect to spend, if you do it yourself, it might be a little less, but expect to spend around $25,000.